Hey everybody, welcome back to We Can Geek Tim Geo here, and today we're gonna be taking a look at Undead Unlock. Welcome back to the channel, and yeah, I took my sweet time getting to Undead Unlock. This premiered, I think, back in January of 2020, and only now I got uh, around to making an actual video of it and catching up on the series. This action series, written and drawn by Yoshifumi Tozuka, tells the story of Fuko Izumu and her Unlock powers. You see, she has this uncanny, unnatural ability where if you touch her skin or she touches you, uh, bad things happen. An unlucky scenario will occur. When the story begins, we find Fuko basically just giving up on life and getting ready to jump from a bridge. And it's not until a chance encounter when everybody's uh, screaming for her to not jump where she meets this character called Undead. We don't really know his name, but later on she actually nicknames him Andy. But for all intents and purposes, he is the Undead portion of Undead Unlock. So moving forward in this review, I'm just gonna say Andy, cause it's a little bit of a tongue twister to keep repeating Undead Unlock. So Andy is able to convince Fuko to uh, step down but she impales him because she was carrying a knife uh, in the process and he falls and is struck by the train that's coming on uh, under the bridge and to our surprise and to everybody's surprise he actually survives turns out he is this undead ghoulish zombie although he prefers to be called an undead he's not actually a brain-seeking zombie. He just happens to be a badass and mortal with a very uh, quirky personality, a very stubborn, hard-ass, and kind of a badass dude. Andy wants, uh, you know, he's lived for so many years, what he's craving most is actually, uh, like, permanent death. He's lived for many, many years, and through some hijinks involving uh, Fuku, he realizes that she may hold the key to ending his immortality because of her strange uh, unlucky powers and how she's able to uh, basically give anybody the worst luck imaginable and uh, in some occasions death as the case of her family. She's now living a single life and is actually pretty depressed because she can't socialize with anybody She's such a shut-in and doesn't feel like she would be a part of the world because of her, or what she thinks is her bad luck. Later turns out to be this super ability that gets explored further down the line in the story. So it is under these circumstances that these two odd characters meet up. And what soon follows is this action rump classic Shonen Jump style of two characters coming together for a very particular purpose. And of course, evil forces and all that jazz coming after them. You see, as soon as they get acquainted, uh, you know, at first, Fuko doesn't really like Andy whatsoever. He's a bit of a groper, he's a bit of a weirdo, a, a bit of a perv, because he has a tendency to lose all his clothing as soon as he gets either impaled, shot, decapitated, whatever it may be, he ends up losing his pants and he has to be hilariously censored by the author in the manga, which is uh, the butt of many jokes that he could not keep his pants on. So if you're able to move aside from that weird humor, there's actually a lot of charming storytelling here as you have a character like Fuko who has sort of given up and the character of Andy who has lived through so much encouraging her to live and seek tomorrow because it will be a better day tomorrow and there's more to live for so I found that really nice uh, for the story to drive home that message but obviously it's not all sunshine and rainbows Andy wants to do different experiments to really understand the full extent of Foucault's powers and how th this uh, ratio of skin contact equates to uh, just unluck 
unlucky scenarios happening from uh, a rooftop falling on top of your head to uh, something exploding to a freaking meteorite. It's all over the place and it varies between uh, the ratio and of course Fuko's emotional state towards the person that she's uh, touching. So it, it, there's a full uh, explanation to her powers, and I found that pretty refreshing considering the subject matter of the series, which I'm not going to entirely spoil, but let's just say that once the antagonistic forces start to show up, basically this organization that is after them, because they uh, want to regulate the Earth and want to keep everything as normal as possible, and crazy individuals like the two of them, uh, are abnormalities and you have to remove them from you know the regular life for people on earth no matter what country and you know once they and this is just a slight spoiler once they dispose of them in that first introductory arc uh, we get a new status quo for the characters and the possibility of them not having to face such harsh uh, fates and possibly evolve and continue to grow with a set of characters that are going to be the main supporting cast, if you will. So what uh, I, I like the idea that what you think is this antagonistic force gets sort of flipped around on its head and actually provides a source of uh, resources and comfort and security for these characters. Obviously, we're going to get some main threats later on, and the world opens up to some really crazy, bizarre, nicely done world building with the fact that there are ancient artifacts and people with super abilities that are unnatural. There's a lot of UN in this title. And of course, the mystery of Andy and how he became the way that he is, and you might have noticed his character design with his silver hair, he's got a freaking... At first, when you see the promo images, you don't really realize what's that, uh, what's on his forehead, but it's actually a card which he has stuck there to sort of numb his brain from all the knowledge that he has, from a hundred years worth of knowledge, right? Because he, he's an immortal. So that would drive him crazy, and he's sort of just limiting or buffing himself so he can uh, behave and act normal. Meanwhile, the character of Fuko finds that even though at first she doesn't like Andy, the, his inter their interactions will help her develop into a full-fledged character and, you know, progress her story and personality along to uh, a very likable character that you can root for. The villains and side characters in this story are really interesting. I like the character designs. At first, I wasn't really a fan of the art going in for the first chapter. It took a while for me to get used to the drawings for some reason, but it's not bad. Don't get me wrong. I just think uh, it was a little bit... Um, too rounded and not entirely defined to my particular taste when it comes to uh, manga, especially for a story like this, which is action-packed and uh, slightly humor-based as well. It took a little while, maybe a couple chapters in where I got uh, used to the art style and the character faces and the anatomy and all that stuff. It's different from what you would expect an action comedy series would be. But nonetheless, um, you know, I, I'm almost completely up to date with this story and it's lovely and, and really funny and action packed and I'm really enjoying it. And it just, I like that, I think the main thing that I like about Undead Unlock is the fact that they're able to take a simple concept of a character that has bad luck powers, basically a, a, a worse version of Rogue from the X-Men and keep evolving that stuff and you have a character like Andy who you think you know he's an undead character he's sort of a hard ass and how can he evolve from that uh, obviously he is seeking a way to end his immortality so you would think oh once he has that answer that's sort of it for the plot right 
But no, there are a lot of twists and turns and their relationship continues to grow. And when you think the introduction kind of solves things, it throws another wrench into the plan and you start getting introduced to different side characters that present different scenarios and different abilities. And it's a, it's a constantly evolving story, which I really appreciate. And yeah, just the fact that you took such a simple concept and you're able to blow it up to really cool proportions is the sign of good storytelling and of course uh, Yoshifumi is doing a fantastic job. Uh, overall, uh, first impressions wise, I think it's a fantastic, fun action series with a really kooky concept that uh, if you stick with it, it will surprise you with, of course, the character interactions and how the plot continues to blow up from where it started. Viz Media licensed it pretty quickly, so we are gonna get a physical release. That's awesome. I wish other series would have gotten that uh, physical uh, release earlier than Undead Unlock, but we'll see what happens. What about you guys? Have you read Undead Unlock? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you haven't, let me know what are some of your favorite undead characters in manga or anime. Very interested in finding out. Guys, as always, thank you so much for liking, commenting, and subscribing to A Week and Keep Them. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. I do content like this where I go over anime, manga, and a little bit of comics here and there. Thank you, everybody, once again. I have got to go. I will catch all of you on our next episode.